Great teachers change lives. They challenge us. They influence us with big and important ideas. They bring us into ways of thinking and understanding our lives and the world around us in ways that will mean we were never the same. They become lifelong friends, mentors, career guides, and great teachers are rare, too rare. And it's never been more important to have good, strong teachers in higher education. As costs skyrocket, as enrollment is lower, consistently lower for everyone except for the top tier schools and universities, and as student satisfaction is increasingly used as a measure of the success of the institution and its future likelihood of survival. So how do we find out who these great teachers are? How do we find them so that we can benefit by them? And how do colleges and universities find them so they can hire them and keep them and encourage them? Wow, Miss LeBon's the kind of evaluation I could write. I mean, you and I have some history. I'm a delightful rascal and you're a bit punishy. Louise, stop, no. Bad, awful, principal's office, now we have fun. (laughs) Well, student evaluations seem to be the most obvious thing. Let's get everybody's feedback, including students in the classroom, especially in a more customer-focused environment like we're going through today. And let's find out why they're so horrible at figuring out who great teachers really are. They're poorly designed, often harmful, rarely helpful, and they're usually misunderstood. And among teachers, opinions swing wildly from, why don't I get better student evaluations, to, eh, they mean nothing, they don't know anything, I'm the one with the PhD. And add to this the disruption known as rate my professor. And we just don't know what to do with student evaluations today, or how they're supposed to figure, or even if they're important in higher education, in your career as someone starting off, someone in a tenure track role, or someone looking for work, or an adjunct, an instructor, that needs to demonstrate that they're valuable and they add value to a program. Student evaluations, oh, they make people lose sleep. You guys like me, right? So let's get it on the page, huh? So let's take a quick look at student evaluations, what the research says, and how they actually function in higher ed today, and how we can use them to improve, well, our experience in higher education. Hi, I'm James Callahan, adjunct professor, one-time tenure track professor, and the holder of a strong 4.7 rating on Rate My Professor. And this is The Do-Over Show, where we find better ways to do the things that often get in the way and cause us to stumble. So we get to grade you. I don't know if I could do that because I'm not very judgy. Oh, wait, I am. (laughs) I'm great at these. I wrote an online review that got a barista fired for spelling my name with an I. Uh, I don't think so. So here's my quick take on student evaluations. They will never be able to help you, but they can end a career. Year after year, professional educators and administrators try to figure out what's wrong with student evaluations. And there's universal agreement that these evaluations fail to identify great teachers. And they actually encourage a discouraging impression of the experience of higher education today. They actually result in lower customer or student satisfaction. Take this recent survey of bias and just plain meanness, too common in student evaluations from my friends in Australia. It included horrible comments like, you're fat, ugly, old, or he is really rude, which is why everyone hates him. And just my own experience in nine colleges and universities at the undergrad and grad level and serving on teacher evaluation committees and dealing with student evaluations, I can tell you how meaningless student evaluations are if you expect them to do you some good. And at some schools, student evaluations are just too overly complimentary and students don't take advantage of the opportunity to have a free shot at the prof. At the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, where I taught when I was a grad student at Marquette, well, the student evaluations that I received were embarrassingly complimentary. They were nice. Uh, the students actually wanted to do me a favor. The department chair told me that he couldn't include my student evaluations in the department ratings because, well, it would piss off the other department chairs that his department had better ratings. Now, besides the general complaint that students shouldn't be given that much power and influence in higher education, there is also the problem of obvious bias. Bias against women, teachers of color, diverse ethnic instructors. How do we know there's bias? Because in a side-by-side study of the same coursework taught by two different people, the white male professor, in STEM especially, received consistently higher grades on standardized course material than anyone else that taught the course. Now, that tells you something. First of all, if you're in STEM, don't be a jerk. 
And secondly, that there is a consistent bias that's observable when we have the controlled circumstance to figure out, are people really biased here? And it turns out we are. Oh, and another consistently inconsistent, or is it inconsistently consistent? I don't know, but here it is. If students expect to get an A or a B in a course, their ranking of the teacher is always higher than students who expect to get a C, D, or even fail the course. And they complain regularly that the teacher is the problem. You need a scapegoat. You're the scapegoat. And then there's the disregard or disdain from old school professors who say that, what do they know? They don't know what the subject is and we have to form them. We have to pour our vast stores of knowledge into this empty vessel called a student. And if they don't like it or if they feel uncomfortable, well, welcome to the big, bad, mean world. I actually was in one meeting when the guy next to me leaned over and said, <clears throat> You know, uh, students are told to make up their own minds. Well, it would work if they had minds worth making up. And then there's this, they can't be trusted attitude or the old school idea that this is not a customer service business. But increasingly, higher education is, the success in higher education is linked to a customer service approach. Why? Because happy alumni give more to the schools. They give higher rankings to the schools, a higher satisfaction rating. So when all of those, uh, when all of those evaluations come out about rankings of schools and universities that administrators are so proud of, well, better student evaluations usually translate into a higher evaluation of the college or university. And amazingly, when students have a better opinion of the school, the university, and of the class, they actually perform better and they have, even if they struggle with it, even if it's a difficult course, they have a more positive reaction to it. Customer satisfaction really matters. When students feel and experience better teaching, they consistently outperform their peers, not only ranking the school higher, but actually encouraging their own success. You need an evaluation that's catchy and blurb worthy. Got it. Miss Twitchell's so good, she makes learning almost worth it. Yes, that's great. Write that. So here's the reality about student evaluations and how they're actually used today, how they function in higher education. They can easily disqualify someone, even a relatively good teacher with great potential. They can disqualify that person from a role in the field. That is, they don't really matter, but a poor student evaluation gives the department chair or the administration a chance to say, we wish you well in your next endeavor. In all of the literature and research, in all of my conversations with department chairs and peers and those looking for advice struggling in tenure track roles or trying to get into adjunct or instructor roles to get a taste of the field and to distinguish themselves because they're absolutely certain they can contribute and add value as good teachers, the one thing that's consistently clear is that student evaluations do not matter. They're never more than an insignificant part of evaluating whether or not someone is worth hiring, retaining, or promoting. How do I know they just don't matter? Well, here's the easy way to tell. The trend in higher education today is to take student evaluations out of one of the last class administrated in person, proctored by a student, and to put them as online and automated. Well, that shift has done something. It's lowered participation of student evaluations from about 80% for in-class, one of the last class presentations or proctored for students. Uh, it's lowered it to just about 20% participation rate by students. And has anyone complained about that lower, precipitously lower participation rate for online student evaluations? No. And that proves it just doesn't matter. Well, you say, why not make the completion of a student evaluation mandatory for successfully completing a course? You know, just check a box, you get a notice, submit the final grade because they submitted an evaluation. Well, here's the reason why. When you force students to do a student evaluation in order to complete the course to finish it, they consistently rank the professor and the course lower. Hey, Rudy, put your pencil down. The second we turn these in, the teachers stop being nice. But Fran said they're not due till the end of the day. Right now, we hold the cards. Today, we do what we want. Movies instead of math. We confiscate the teacher's gum. And Rudy poops as he pleases. I like that. Louise. Today, we say jump, and the teachers say how high. But they can't jump very high because they're middle-aged. But they still have to say how high. Get down this minute, Louise. I mean, good for you, climbing up there using the desk that way. <laughs> Today we celebrate our Independence Day! Oh boy. 
And the weighting of student evaluations and hiring and retention has never been more, especially in, in tenure track schools, has never been more than maybe 5% of the entirety of what contributes to a successful promotion or granting of tenure. So is there a way, is there a disruption to this obvious problem of how insignificant and misguided student evaluations are or how meaningless they are in evaluating good teaching? Well, the disruption known as Rate My Professor has really shaken things up, and it's systematically ignored by people who are in higher education today. But every single student I have ever talked to or asked about it uses Rate My Professor to figure out whether or not they should take a course from this professor, from you, even though we consistently ignore them. Started in 1999, Rate My Professor has grown to be the largest destination for professor ratings. That's not really saying much, but the site includes 8,000 plus schools, 1.7 million different professors, and over 19 million individual ratings. And colleges and universities hate it. Absolutely hate it. But professors secretly check their ratings on Rate My Professor. Complain about it. A few of them have sued to try to get bad ratings removed. I wonder if anybody sued to get a good rating removed. Doubtful. But, like I said, every single student I've ever known uses Rate My Professor, which gives Rate My Professor a unique power advantage to the students. Something that's secret, something that they wouldn't have access to otherwise, and that is student evaluation outcomes. Now, several studies that have compared standardized evaluations with the random and voluntary Rate My Professor evaluations that are available find out that they correlate rather closely. The bias is present in both. The grade bias, when you expect to get a good grade, the rating in the class and for the professor is consistently higher. All the major measures of the use of the textbook and the difficulty of the course pretty much line up between standardized secret evaluations that only certain people get to see and the public and visible student empowering Rate My Professor ratings. So why don't colleges and administrators rely on or use Rate My Professor? Well, they say they can't be trusted or they're just a sample ranking. But yeah, 20% of students responding in a class, that's not a sample ranking. The biggest takeaway from the disruption that Rate My Professor has introduced is that it should give you a good indication of basically the opinion that people hold of you as a teacher or of how difficult or how easy or how good a course or even a teacher can be. If you're a teacher or professor wondering how you can improve or the things that get good feedback and the things that you need to work on, or if you're a student searching for a course that can be taught by someone who actually knows what they're doing and can help you with the learning experience or at least give you a chance to get a good grade, well, Rate My Professor is one of the most powerful tools we have at our disposal today. Short of that, if you're a teacher, I suggest that you break the rules. Break the unwritten rules and actually explicitly address student evaluations with your class. Now, obviously do so before the manipulative end to a course or the semester where students will be especially sensitive to that power differential where you're the one who holds the power of their grade and, and you want a good evaluation from them, wink, wink, so that you can get a good evaluation. No, it doesn't work that way. So talk about it earlier. Get involved in a discussion of their expectations, of what they see in the course, things that they like. Oh, here's an idea. Do a mid-course evaluation yourself. That is, create a short survey, give it to the students, and ask them, how's the course going? How's the reading going? Are you keeping up on your reading? Ask them questions that put the burden on them, not just focus on you. And ask them, are you doing the reading? Does the reading help you in preparing for the requirements of the course? How would you gauge your learning? Have you learned a lot, a little? Are, you, are there ways that you can learn more? Are there things you want to see more of? Are there things that you want to see in the course that could actually benefit the class? Do you want more discussion, less discussion? Here's a funny story. I did this one time with a mid-course evaluation. And this one person said, I think we need more discussion in the class to make learning more important. And another person said, I think we need less discussion in the class because it's getting in the way of learning. So you have to be careful with student evaluations. So how do you handle that obvious discrepancy? You talk about it openly and you say, here's the funny thing. Some of you want more discussion. Some of you want less. We're still going to try to do our best, but you've got to be honest with them and they'll be honest with you and say, some of you think it should go in this direction. Others that direction. We have to manage this together. Let's do some adulting together. Have that explicit and honest conversation with them. It's not an adversarial relationship. 
That's old school teaching where you know it all and they know nothing. How dare they evaluate you? You're there to evaluate them. Instead, make it a learning process where just as they're learning the subject, you're learning how to be better teachers for their benefit. Hey, and even if there are jerks in the class and they're just going to be snide and snarky, they're going to take those shots anyway. Just remember, the consolation is your evaluations really don't matter that much. And if you're really wondering what it takes to survive in higher education today, I've done a video showing the ins and outs and some ways, well, that you can make higher education work for you. So be sure to check out that video. Here's a little aside. Very few people who are actually teachers in higher education today have ever been taught or learned how to teach. Hey, they've never done more than maybe a seminar preparing for a semester. Most people in higher education and never learn what it takes to actually be a successful teacher in their field or in the changes in their field. Maybe that means that those poor, snarky, lower than average student evaluations were true. Hey, and thanks for being part of the do-over show and please tap the like button and give me a good evaluation. And while you're down there, how about you subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss an episode. I'm so glad you found me and I found you. Thanks.